Okay, uh, shape keys. A lot of you probably already know everything I'm going to be saying today, but on the chance some of you aren't familiar with shape keys, I'm really excited to talk about them just because they are they are they're one of the few things in CG that just seems really really direct. Like normally you're working with displacements or or uh, rigs or something, and you kind of have to like warp your brain a little bit to wrap your head around like what are we doing? And this is just like you reach in, you grab the mesh, and you say do this, and it goes oh okay. So here let me let me show you. Um, under under the object data properties, we've got our shape keys. I'm gonna add a base key first, and the base key is basically just saying like this is this is the original object. You just you just add it. You never ha really have to touch it again. Um, so now if we click this again, we add our first shape key, and that's that's all you gotta do. When this is selected, anything you do in edit mode is just gonna be editing the shape key. So that's a thing too. That is one of the tricky things is. If you have this selected, then you start editing stuff and you don't realize it. You can be editing shape keys and things can get kind of funky. So just go back to basis uh, when you're done. Uh, all right. So with that selected, we go into edit mode and let's move. You know, let's move the top of this that way. Great. And so now that's that's we just did it. Um, right now, when I tab out of edit mode, we don't see anything, and that's because the default value is zero for that shape key. But look at that. Now we can just control in between those those two values. Uh, but that's where stuff starts to get kind of cool because, again, all all the shape key is doing is recording displacement. It's it's remembering, uh, hey, uh, how do I describe this? We're just moving this vertex in this direction. That's the only data it has is this vertex, this direction. And so we turn this up, boop, boop, boop. We can um, invert it. Yeah. I feel like I'm not talking good. Um, I've been talking. I've, I'm alone in the mornings, and I wake up and I like I hit record, and I'm like, hey, and secretly like my introverted brain is like, what are what are we doing? Um, range minimum. Oh, check this out. So we go negative one, and now we can actually drag it the other way, and it just goes. Okay, that same that same value. Just do negative one. Uh, we can probably do two and like negative two and make it even woo. So you can start to see how this is really handy, but. Again, remember that it's just an offset from from an initial position, which means we can stack them. Here, I'm going to uncheck this because if you edit a shape key, and we're going to edit another shape key, and if you edit a shape key while a previous one is on, then it's like, wait, do you want me to? Are we displacing from the original location or the one with the shape key applied? And it can get kind of funky, so this just works better. Um, so we'll call this side to side, and we'll add another one that's up down. So yeah, just go on in and pull it up, and look at that. Now we can do that. Here we'll make this negative one too. So we can, with this shape key, we can animate left to right. With this one, we can go up to down, uh, and they just they work together like just perfectly. It's great. There are places where it can get kind of weird, and I guess we'll just get into that in a in a sec here with Mr. Pigeon. Uh, I just released the the pigeon assets. Uh, they're they're fun, but they're completely animated with shape keys, which I think works faster because it doesn't have to deal with any rigs. You don't have to keep the rig and the object aligned or anything like that. It's just an object doing a thing, and that might be superstition, but I feel like it's a very lightweight way to to animate stuff. So, all right, we've got our basis, our basic shape key here, and let's add another one. And just let's see, I'm gonna turn on proportional editing, and uh, go into X-ray mode here. I'm just gonna grab his head and scroll down that a little bit Let's just poof up poof up his head yeah because pigeons do this thing where they'll bring his head their heads all the way in and they'll go Arr! um and now we can just look at that we just got it and that looks a little bit weird i think i picked the wrong angle so i might kind of tuck it back like that so one one thing we can do i like when um when they pull their head back for their chest to puff out a little bit which means if when we uh let's see yeah when he sticks his head out if we tuck in his chest slightly that means if we uh give a negative option too when it goes negative the chest puffs out and that looks pretty bad um maybe it'll we only let it go to like negative point four and there we go that's also, I mean, it's easy enough to, to tweak. You just pull these back out, and that's, again, shape keys are your friend, and I, I like it. So we could add some keyframes to this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Okay, so F3 images as planes. Okay, afterburner, F3, import images as planes. Here's a nice jet nozzle texture. Uh, tab into edit mode, and I'm going to use K to just cut out this, this little section here. Let's see, I think, because I'm going to be looping it, I only really want one section. Like, I'm only going to include that top flap, not the bottom one, if that makes sense. Okay, Here, let me add a seam for that one, too. Cool. So that looks to this part out. And here, I'm gonna turn off show back faces. Yeah, that's looking that's looking a little bit better. Maybe make it a little more rounded with a K tool here. Portional editing on, pull that out just a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna turn on Alt D. Make another instance of that at 180 degrees. Doing it again. Was that 90? Cool. And then one more at 45. And they're all intersecting, but if I go into edit one of these, now I'm editing all of them at the same time. So all I have to do is kind of try to try to line these guys up a little bit. Just kind of a nice, nice way to be able to do it. Okay, so we've got it. We've got our afterburner. Oh, here. I'm going to make it all be one object. So Control A, make instances real, and then Control J joins them all, so that we're all just working with one one object. And here, let me turn down. Let me turn down the. Uh, turn up the roughness. Turn down the specular. Yeah. And now you know. You know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into shape keys, create our basic, our basis, basis. I always called it basic. Uh, basis shape key. Create a new shape key, and this will be the dilation. Tab into edit mode with that selected. Uh, grab them. And oh, wait a second. We Okay, so we could just do this. We could just scale it. And then he thought for a minute. And okay, no, uh, I think I was trying to be too lazy. Like, we could just scale this down like this. And then we have our our nozzle blah, 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 blah. but what I want is for this this area that goes underneath like ideally the metal shouldn't be stretching um, ideally like these are just sliding over each other not like Rrr. so let's let's rework it yeah getting rid of these shape keys here I'm gonna select uh, delete everything but this one oh vertices yes I'm gonna make this a separate object down here so now they can actually slide slide over each other. In fact, I might even scale it out so there's actually some solid overlap. I'm going to recreate what I had before. Cool. Okay. And now I'm just going to work with one and everything else will just, you know, keep up. So the first shape key, uh, we had our basic shape key here. And we had our new shape key. And I'm just going to select... Let's see. I'm going to hide this flap. We'll deal with that one in a second gonna grab all of these and without scaling or anything I'm just gonna move them down in fact if we wanted to be really cool because that still would be stretching we can put our 3d cursor right here and how do we put it right there Boop. and then if we set this to um, rotate around the 3d cursor it'll actually hinge around that point so we can slide that down like that and there we go that's whoa There we go. Cool. And then Alt H here. We'll get our other panel back. And let's just bring this down to where it makes sense. Cool. And hopefully, hopefully that'll do it. That that appears to have to have done it. Okay, great. So we have we have that, but remember we can also stack them. And there are nozzles that will actually direct, you know, so they don't have to like ro use their flaps. They'll actually rotate the the jet nozzle instead to kind of serve as a rudder. 
It's very hard to engineer, but it's very easy to replicate with shape keys. So make a new one, and this one will be, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Okay, I'm gonna select all of these, and now I'm going to apply Control A, make instances real, Control J, and ideally it'll still be saving all of those shape keys with their same, yes, good, good, good. Okay, so now I'm um, got our new shape key going. Now I'm just gonna select these and say, that way. Range negative one. So now we can both dilate. In fact, let's add a little noise modifier. Adding the keyframe with I. Going into the, the graph editor here. Graph editor, there we go. And if I go into modifiers, I can add some noise and it'll go, blah, as if the fire's coming out, making everything's shaking, you know. And then it can be like, you'll go over here, you go over here. You go over here, boo, here, here. That's fun. This is fun to me. <laughs> this is the type of thing that I call fun. But you can imagine a lot of other other uses too. Like you could make a, um, I saw a guy make a flower opening once. Uh, pages in a book fluttering like in the wind. You just, you know, displace them a little bit. You make one flutter and then you add a noise modifier on that. I use it a lot for when people are, are driving on motorcycles or something like that. You just have some clothes, it's kind of, blah, 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 blah. it takes two seconds to rig up. Add a, add a shape key, add a noise modifier. Uh, there, yeah, it's just very, very handy for being able to reach in and do a thing. This would be, this would be fairly tedious to rig with a, with a standard rig, I think. And so, anyways, I hope, I hope that's some help. I might re-record this in a second because uh, I haven't even finished my coffee. But don't believe in yourself, Ian. You're just gonna upload it.